529 plans are incredibly easy to open and very convenient when it comes to planning for college expenses. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to open one up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mao Livodi with Financially Present, your one-stop shop for financial and investment education. And in today's video, we're going to go over 529 plans. These types of accounts are very, very convenient, and they are state-sponsored plans, meaning that they can vary depending on what state you live in. I live in the state of Virginia, so what I'm going to show you today is how to open up a Virginia 529 plan account. Just a little bit about a 529 plan. It is a tax advantage account, meaning that any of the earnings grown in the account are tax-free, assuming you spend the money on education-related expenses. So up until 2017, this was only meant for college education expenses, but now you can actually use the money for K through 12 expenses, it could be private schools, religious schools, uh, even trade schools. All of the funds or proceeds and gains in the account can be used towards that. Just a little bit about 529 plans. This is based off the of IRS tax code 529. And basically these state sponsored plans could be one of two types. It could be prepaid or it could be a savings plan. For prepaid, this allows you to actually prepay for college right now. So imagine you have a child who's supposed to start college in year 2037. We're in current year 2022, so I can pay 2022 prices for a college education that will be used in the future. So that's the advantage. We can always predict that the prices will continue to go up for colleges. Then there are savings plans where you could essentially just invest in different portfolios and those will grow based off of the risk and the investments within it. Regardless of if you pick a prepaid plan or a savings plan, if you're using a 529 plan, the amount or the value of the account is going to be considered tax-free assuming you spend it on qualified educational expenses. So we're talking tuition, room and board, uh, books, any type of qualified educational expenses. Be sure to reference the IRS website or your state's sponsored plan website for these type of details. As far as contributions for 529 plans, there is no contribution limit. You can put as much as you want, but what we do know that is if you give more than $16,000 per year to any type of account, you are subject to gift taxes, okay? So, $16,000 is the limit for 2022. But they do have a provision. If you came up on a lot of money all of a sudden and you want to what's called front load the 529 plan, you can actually put the next five years worth of the maximum to the gift tax limit in the account. So 16,000 times five would be $80,000. You can decide if you just opened one up, you could put $80,000 in there, but you can't put anything else in there for the next five years unless you want to be penalized by the gift tax. So those are the details as far as what you have to do and what you can put in them. Now let's go ahead and open up an account. Remember, this is a Virginia 529 plan, and I'm pretty sure for most states, all of this, the information is going to be very, very similar. All right. So to open a Virginia 529 account, you go to virginia529.com. I already have one account for my daughter. We can open up the account for my son. So I'll just click on open an account. It gives you a quick tutorial of how to do it, but you're watching my video, so you're good. The information you're going to need, account owner information. So address, state ID, like your driver's license or even your passport and your social security number. And then for your beneficiary, meaning the person who is going to benefit from the funds growing in this account. So usually the child, or it could be yourself, depending on what you want to do with the 529. You need the beneficiary's current address, social security number, date of birth. So it's going to be information for my son. And then designated survivor. That is someone who, if something were to happen to you, they would be the person who becomes the account owner. So you are the account owner. Your child or the person who's going to use the money is going to be the beneficiary. And then the designated survivor is uh, the replacement for you, the account owner. So all that information you need. So we're going to hit continue open application. First name, last name, email. So you're 
also going to have to verify your email address when you put that in. They're going to send you a code. Go to that email address and enter that code back on this page. I'm going to fill out this information and proceed. And they're going to send me the confirmation code. I'll enter that. My address. After you enter that information in, you're going to be able to create a login and password, and then you're in the account. So once you have the account created, you have to select the investment. So we're going to select a new invest 529 account. You have six sections that you need to fill out the account owner section. So your details, account owner relationship, beneficiary, which is the child or the money, the who the money is going to go to product selection and then designated survivor followed by other authorized individuals. So if you wanted to give someone else the ability to view the account, that's where you would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that information in. And of course, at the end, you get to review all of that. Section one, first name, middle name, last name. As you progress, it'll show you the sections you've completed. And if you try to go ahead of time, it'll show you what you've missed. Now we're at the portion where you select which portfolio you want to pick for your child. Uh, you can put in as little as $10 to start with, and you need to set up a recurring uh, deposit amount. So it's going to ask you for your bank information. So you have to have a blank check ready. That's what I recommend. The options available range from target funds. So depending on their age range, the risk and the conservation of the invested amount is managed depending on their age range. There are target risk portfolios as well. So these allocations uh, essentially tell you not just based off of their age, but based off of the actual allocation, how risky or conservative they are. Then you have index-based portfolios. These are based off of indexes. Think about the S&P 500. Think about the bond indexes. Think about international indexes. These investment portfolios are based off of that. And then these are more, well, principal protected and specialty portfolios. These are just slightly different. You can also decide to click on any of these portfolio titles and look more in depth into what is invested within it. After you selected the investment, you will enter in your bank information and the day of the month that you wish to have the money pulled out of your account. I always recommend a date that's convenient for you to remember or a date that's according to you when you get paid. Or lastly, you can pick the day of the month that your child is born. So if your child is born on the 21st of the month, maybe every 21st is when you have the money paid directly into their account. It's just one easy way. Next is the survivor designee. So if something happens to me, I need to make sure someone else can become the owner of the account and take care of it or manage it until my kids uh, get of the age where they're going to use it. But remember, the owner also can redesignate the beneficiaries of the fund. So it is very important who you choose. I am choosing my wife for this matter. And after you've entered in the designee, survivor designee information, you can enter in the authorized individual information. And uh, the only other person I will authorize at this point is my wife. So she would be able to call up if necessary and speak on this account. After everything's all said and done, you're just going to hit review, double check your information, and then you'll be able to submit. After you've reviewed everything, you're going to have a uh, chance to review the Invest 529 account agreement. Just take a moment and look at all the details and before you click I agree. After you do that, it will confirm how you want to invest for that initial investment amount, whether it's going to come from a bank account or a different type of account, usually checking or savings. Mine was a checking. I submitted that. Uh, confirmed it and got my approval and I'm good to go. It's set up to pay on a reoccurring basis the monthly amount directly into my son's account and we're good. All right, so there you have it. It was pretty easy, wasn't it? If you like this video, 
Go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the page, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future content. And until next time, stay present.